Hey y'all, Michael Malekadeh here, back with ENL3, Introduction to Literature, Being Human in a More Than Human World, week two. For this week, we're going to be reading eight poems, two by Lucille Clifton, two by Seamus Haney, two by Walt Whitman, and two by Ross Gay. In the weekly forum post, I'm going to ask you to do some comparative thinking, analysis, and synthesis uh, between a couple different poets, uh, but the subject of today's video is Lucille Clifton and her poem, Cutting Greens. So I'm going to read the poem aloud, and then I'm going to talk my way through analyzing some of its key features and elements, literary devices and stuff, and raising some questions for further reflection. Cutting Greens. Cutting Greens by Lucille Clifton. Curling them around, I hold their bodies in obscene embrace, thinking of everything but kinship. Collards and kale strain against each strange other, away from my kiss-making hand and the iron bed pot. The pot is black, the cutting board is black, my hand, and just for a minute, the greens roll black under the knife, and the kitchen twists dark on its spine, and I taste in my natural appetite the bond of live things everywhere. That's Lucille Clifton. Uh, so I'm just, there's also, uh, there's an awesome audio recording of her reading it as well. I'm going to drop the link to that in the description or comment section on this video so you can listen to it. She has some interesting remarks about the poem uh, leading up to it too. So I encourage you to check it out, Lucille Clifton reading her own poem. So um, let's start out with kind of the obvious surface level meaning of the poem. It's a, as the title tells us, it's a description of the speaker of the poem, Cutting Greens, doing some food preparation work in the kitchen. It's a pretty mundane, everyday activity, uh, something that we do all the time and maybe don't reflect on a lot. But the poem gives us a sense that there's something more going on with this mundane activity, that something profound is happening for the speaker. And so I ask, what in the poem is giving me that sense? What makes this activity seem more profound than just chopping up some collards and kale? And the first thing I notice in the poem is its diction, its language, its word choice uh, is pretty unusual, pretty elevated, pretty strange ways of describing this mundane activity. She says, I hold their bodies in obscene embrace. Uh, saying that collards and kale have bodies is slightly unusual or interesting. Obscene embrace. That's a super weird way of saying, you know, she doesn't say, well, I pushed the greens together in a weird way. She says, I held their bodies in obscene embrace. So the diction is elevated. It's thoughtful. And it's super weird too, even if we weren't talking about greens, obscene embrace. It's an unusual description. Embrace, we usually think of as a positive thing. Maybe not so positive here in the, in the word choice. And so that's kind of a pattern throughout the poem. The language itself tells me something more is going on here. The, the greens are straining against each strange other. The hand that's holding them is kiss-making. A lot of weird stuff going on in the language. So... When I think about the effect of that language, other than just cluing me into something profound going on, uh, I think about this term that these Russian dudes in the 20th century came up with. Uh, they said literature and art in general, but especially literature, is good at defamiliarizing familiar stuff. So writers take familiar experiences and they describe them in ways that make them unfamiliar, that bring out the strangeness. Uh, so I see some defamiliarization going on in this poem. It might be one of the literary devices or techniques Lucille Clifton is using. Um, I also notice 
uh, when I think about the imagery in the poem, the stuff that invokes one of the five or six senses, uh, pretty much every image in the poem is literal, realistic description of this everyday scene until near the end. Um, you know, so we have literal description. The pot is black. The cutting board is black. My hand. <clears throat> the greens roll black under the knife. Could be a little bit literal and figurative, but I think we can we can take it as visual. And the kitchen twists dark on its spine. That's a, a radical departure from the realistic, literal imagery of the poem so far. There's something much more figurative, much more metaphorical going on there. And so that tells me something has changed. That image takes me out of the everyday world of the kitchen and puts me in some kind of different register of experience. So now that I know that the poem is doing something more than just presenting an everyday scene of kitchen work, I've got to ask, what is it? What is it doing? What is this profound experience that the poet is trying to relay about? And so I look through it. I look at the descriptions in the poem, the repetitions in the poem, and because I know a little bit about Lucille Clifton herself, um, I think this poem is telling me something about Lucille Clifton's experience as a black woman in America. So I know she wrote about her experience as a black woman a lot. Um, the poem itself brings our attention to that. In the middle of the poem, the pot is black, the cutting board is black, my hand, and, and so she has a way of both saying and not saying that this is a poem about her experience of blackness. Cool. So then I got to ask, what is the poem saying about this experience? What is this profound experience of being black in America that Lucille Clifton is trying to write about? When I look through the poem, I notice a lot of violence, a lot of manipulation of bodies, um, holding their bodies together, thinking of everything but kinship. The bodies are straining against each strange other. She's cutting up these, she, so she's personified these vegetables as having some kind of agency, being able to strain against each other. And then she's cutting them up. So she's enacting this violence in order to, uh, you know, prepare food and eat and survive another day. And so I see a lot of violence going on in the poem. And that draws me to the ending of the poem. The kitchen, after the kitchen twists dark, she says, I taste in my natural appetite the bond of live things everywhere. We can interpret this ending in a few different ways, probably. On the one hand, uh, there's some connotation, aspect to it, that's sort of positive. Uh, the bond of live things everywhere. We're all connected. All of us are in this together. Uh, could be seen as a kind of positive, profound, even sacred experience of communion or something like that. Um, and that word bond in colloquial everyday speech, if we use that word, it might be a kind of positive thing. Uh, you might say those friends have a really strong connection. They have a strong bond. It's a good friendship, right? Or, uh, in hip hop culture, we used to have this phrase, word is bond, meaning like, <clears throat> I do what I say I'm going to do. My word is my bond. Uh, so it has this aspect of like, responsibility in a positive way. But if you look up that word bond, look up its history and its etymology, well, I didn't actually look it up before making this video. I should have. If you know if, how this word is used in its history, uh, it also refers to slavery. Bondage is another word for slavery. And so since we already know this poem is talking about the author's experience as a black woman in America, I think we have to look at that word bond and say it might have some positive connections to it, but it also has this echo of slavery and of racialized violence in America. Uh, I taste in my natural appetite the bond of live things everywhere. When I think about it, I think my take is what's happening in the ending of this poem is that the thing that connects us all, all living beings, 
is that we have to do violence. We have to take up resources. We have to eat. We have to kill other beings. We have to be in competition with one another. Uh, we have to live in this state of violence in order to keep living. And that's our bond. It's our responsibility. And it's also our kind of state of affairs that we're cursed to. Um, and especially for Lucille Clifton as a black woman writing about her own experience and the legacies that she lives in and lives through. I think it's saying that echo of slavery can never really be gotten rid of. We can't really get out of it. That no ma Even the most mundane of activities, cutting greens in the kitchen, has these echoes of the racialized violence that founded this country and really that founded maybe the whole world's sense of modernity in our modern economy. Um, so yeah, that's heavy, pretty heavy poem that on the face of it just looks like it's about this mundane activity of chopping up vegetables. And so overall, I think the poem is saying the mundane and the, the heavy, the serious, the profound always coexist and they always interpenetrate one another. So that's one way of reading and thinking about Cutting Greens by Lucille Clifton. It's not the only way. You could write a wonderful analytical essay about this poem uh, looking at, you know, I didn't even talk about the nature of gendered work and kitchen work and Lucille Clifton writing about her experience as a woman. Um, didn't talk too much about the relationship between humans and the environment that we might see going on in this poem. There's a lot of different ways that we can read and interpret the poem, even if I think it's a poem about race, and those elements are certainly a part of the poem, there are lots of different ways of approaching it. Cool. So I look forward to reading your weekly forum posts about some of the poems we're reading this week, uh, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.